أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رفيع الدرجات ذو العرش يلقي الروح من أمره على من يشاء من عباده على من يشاء من عباده لينذر يوم التلاق يومهم بارزون لا يخفى على الله منهم شيء لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار اليوم تجزى كل نفس بما كسبت لا ظلم اليوم إن الله سريع الحساب These are ayats from Surah, from Surah Ghafir, the ayah number 15 and 16, and the ayah number 17. In the ayah number 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> talks about himself and says, Rafi'u al-Darajat, he is the one who owns the high ranks, who owns the high degrees, Rafi'u al-Darajat, and the one who raised some of his servants to high degrees. <coughs> Rafi'u al-Darajati dhul arsh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his side some of his servants, some of his believers when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees goodness in them <coughs> he raises them يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْ كُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Actually, we have talked about this ayah in the previous lecture that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the believers and raised those who received the knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledge it and go after that, after the knowledge. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْ كُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Degrees for everyone uh, proper degree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him in a proper degree. This is the way we increase our state, we increase our value in sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he has the highest rank. He, he is the owner of the arsh, dhul arsh. He is the owner of al arsh, the throne, the mighty throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about all his creations, about the about all his creation, the large. We have seen this word in the ayah number seven and we talked about it there. Staydu Billah Alladina Yahmilun al Arsha. The bears, the angelic bears of the throne, Alladina Yahmilun al Arsha, Woman Hawlahu Yusabihun Bihund Rabbihim. And at that moment we said that we do not know much about this word and what does it mean in reality. But we believe as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He is the owner of Al-Arsh. Of course this Arsh is not like uh, the Arsh, like uh, the chair of the kings or like, uh, like the throne of the kings. No, this is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we do not know uh, exactly what does it mean, what we believe in it, as we believe in unseen. Rafi'u al-Darajati dhul arsh But we know that this arsh is above all, is all the creation. It likes a roof above all the creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the power. Rafi'u al-Darajati dhul arsh And he is the owner of al-arsh. يُلْقِ الرُّوحَ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ And we consider the arsh that it is uh, in, uh, in high uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says تَعْرُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ إِلَيْهِ فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ The malaika, the angels and the ruh 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they ascend to him in a day uh, the major whereof is 50,000 years so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all his creation and the angels ascend to him so we consider the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all the creation and that the angels uh, ascend to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at the same time we do not uh, limit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at there we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us wherever we are wa huwa ma'akum ayna ma kuntum maybe you can ask how it can be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his throne on his mighty throne but and the mighty throne uh, is above all the creation and the angels ascend to there uh, in a day whereof is 50,000 years the measure of uh, uh, the distance or the journey of the angels and you can understand the speed of the journey they they ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a day uh, the measure of it is 50,000 years but uh, and there the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but how it can be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his throne and he is at the same time with his every single creature uh, creatures Allah says and he is with you wherever you are so the mistake here comes from our thinking because we uh, try to think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like ourselves because when we are here we cannot be there when we are uh, at this place we cannot be in another place this is impossible for us but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah latifun khabir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not uh, like us laysa kamithlihi shay there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he can be at the same time uh, with his creatures uh, wherever they are as as he said in the ayah wa huwa ma'akum ayna ma kuntum if you believe exactly in that ayah and we believe when Allah said wa nahnu aqrabu ilaykum min habl al warid we are closer than to you from yourself so Allah subhanahu wa we believe exactly in that Ayah uh, also, and we believe the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that was thumma stawa ala al arsh, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, on his uh, istawa uh, on his arsh. So, uh, it's we should not think him as uh, like us, we should not consider him like us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different than everything laysa kamithlihi shay this is uh, his speciality special, his attributes and uh, he hears where we are he sees us innani ma'akuma asma'u wa ara when Moses and Aaron sallallahu alayhim when they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send them to Pharaoh to Fir'aun he, uh, they said, they both said, Inna nakhafu an yafrut alayna aw an yatgha. We fear of him. We fear he may kill us, O oh, our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, both, Inna ni ma'akuma, I am with you both. Asma'u, I hear wa ara, and I see. Look, Allah says, Inna ni ma'akuma, I am with you. So Allah subhanahu wa there is no place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa alladhi fi samai ilahun wa fil ardi ilah He is ilah fi sama He is the Lord of the heavens wa huwa alladhi fi samai ilahun He is ilah in the heavens He is uh, the God in the heavens and wa fil ardi ilahun and He is the only one God in the earth so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, we believe all in all the ayat and uh, as exactly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sa said 
and we should know at the same time that uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laysa kamithlihi shay if we compare him with ourselves, if we compare him with something else in every comparison we will make mistake because we cannot find something or someone uh, like him in any aspect laysa kamithlihi shay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolutely different so we should learn him as if as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself to us and we should learn him from his ayat when we realize and understand his ayat on this universe and his ayat in the Quran uh, in his book in his revelation so we cannot imagine him in a way in a different way by ourselves uh, without depending on true and certain knowledge this is absolutely for, forbidden in Islam, speaking about Allah without knowledge. Are you saying something about Allah without knowledge? This, this is slander. Uh, this is slandering. And No one more unjust than the one who slander Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should know him as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself in the universe over his actions and in his revelations uh, through uh, his words. He says, Rafi'u darajat This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing himself. He owns the highest degrees, the highest ranks, and he raised some of his... Uh, servants some of his believers closer uh, to him subhanahu wa ta'ala but this doesn't mean that Allah shares some of his power with them no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarding them giving them a valuable uh, place but it, they do not share any kind of authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his authorities is are unique uh, belongs to him and they cannot be shareable. The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be shareable. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ghayb, alimul ghaybi fala yudhiru ala ghaybi ahada. He owns the knowledge, he owns the unseen. Of course, he teached us about, he informed us about something, about something from the unseen, but still he has the unseen. Uh, and we cannot reach there. Rafi'u al-Darajati dhul Arsh. And he is the owner of Al Arsh. We believed, we believe in uh, the Arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hope one day to see it. We hope one day to see our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before that moment, we can only uh, learn from Quran. Uh, as uh, much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, teached us or uh, described them to us Rafi'u al-Darajati dhul Arsh Yulqi al-Ruha and no need to in, uh, interpret this wording also no need to interpret them some people interpreted it with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no need to interpret them we should believe in them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and we should not discuss about them we should wait we should wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the reality of them but right now we should believe in them and we should not uh, compare them with the things we have we have seen in this life because this is Allah لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ nothing like him if we compare them with the things we have already known this is uh, a problem this is uh, a falsehood and if we interpret them I think it, it's not also a proper way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could say ذُو الْقُوَّةِ and uh, in Quran we can we uh, encounter somewhere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
وعلموا أن القوة لله جميعا ذو القوة المتين الله سبحانه وتعالى is the power has all the power of course he is the owner of the power and he is عالم الغيب yes but when we interpret these different words with that at that moment some one can ask why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said throne he could say power he could say uh, this uh, something different but of course there there should be a meaning uh, putting this word in this ayah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we do not when we do not compare comprehend because of its uh, of its unseen aspect if it, uh, because of its unseen sight, we should say العلم, like those scholars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, they say كل به كل من عند ربنا. We believed in them all. They are all from our uh, lords, from the sight, from the presence of our Lord. We believe in them all. And make no mistake that I am not inviting you to believe, to uh, uh, to uh, take a belief uh, without proof, without understanding. No, this this side of the belief is unseen, and we we should not say to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, I should see them, I should comprehend them. No, the message of Islam is pure, and that the oneness of God, the oneness of Creator, and this is already proven. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Jannah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about His punishment and describe them, we cannot ask Him to show us. He, he would say only, I will punish you without describing, without naming Jahannam. No need uh, to see them directly uh, in order to believe in them uh, he, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to us uh, I would only say I will punish you uh, at that moment you would say show how you will punish us show us how uh, can you punish if you want to see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's already proven in this life you can see how Allah can punish you can see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may punish you can see uh, the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a simple uh, 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 a simple or a simplest kind of the fire of nar so you can compare uh, from it so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already uh, pr pr uh, has proven his fire to us and how can he uh, punish us so some and about Jannah the same thing you can see the beauties in this life and you can realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created them and he can create it better create better than them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not ask us to make belief in ourselves without understanding it and without proving it no the belief of Islam uh, is logical and is understandable uh, exact and in reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited us to follow something without understanding it wala taqfu ma laysa laka bihi do not follow anything you have not certain knowledge about it so this is not uh, something like that this is about the unseen and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talks about his power, his unlimited power and that he can create these, these things and we have already seen his knowledge and his power in this life. Rafi'u darajati dhul arsh Yulqi ruha min amrihi He is the one who sends down the soul, ar-ruh means the soul yulqi ruha min amrihi out of his command the soul of his command ar-ruha min amrihi in quran 
we often see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when says a ruh he says min amrihi of his command and we uh, learn that in the narration from our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam some people asked him about the ruh I think the Jews asked him about the ruh and uh, there is an ayah came as a response to their question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa yas'alunaka an ruh and they are asking you about the soul about the ruh qul say ar ruh min amri rabbi the soul is from our uh, from uh, the command of my lord ar ruh min amri rabbi وَمَا أُتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you have not given knowledge only a little. وَمَا أُتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا We understand that we will not be able to learn uh, the soul, the ruh. Only we should know that the ruh, the soul, is uh, from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah command and uh, uh, He create the soul. But we do not, uh, and we, I think, we will not be able to understand the reality of the soul. Here, uh, the soul is not the soul of our, uh, the soul of human being. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the soul of uh, Jibreel, the angel Jibreel. Yulqi ruha He sends down the ruh min amrihi out of his command. So the soul comes out of command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The soul does not do something uh, by himself. He does not take the initiative and do something. He comes uh, to the Prophet uh, by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he himself uh, by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-ruhu min amri rabbi purely uh, represents the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have learned from a narration comes from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, in his time the angel didn't come to him for a while maybe for uh, 40 days or maybe more, more than it and uh, the Prophet وسلم, was looking to the sky and waiting him in order to see him after a while when he came the Prophet وسلم, asked him why didn't you come why didn't uh, you uh, show me yourself why didn't you come to me he said and this is an ayah in Quran وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ we do not uh, descend except with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have not that initiative to go somewhere and to go around uh, by our desire no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending me and I'm coming so I uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him ishtaqna ilayk I uh, desired you desired to see you but uh, he said angel Jibreel, Jibreel said wanahnu ishtaqna ilayk akthar we, we desired you more but it's not our ability it's not our uh, uh, right to come to you without the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ we do not descend إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ except with the amr with the commandment of your Lord وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِينَا His what is in front of us it means that the future of us completely in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He determined what we should do in every single moment. 
They do not disobey and they do only what they uh, order it. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing the angels like this. He said, لَهُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِينَا وَمَا خَلْفَنَا And behind of us uh, is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our future and our past completely in His hand. There is no any uh, small or any uh, uh, there is no any uh, way for us to do something else other than commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not we, we should know that the angels when they come they come by uh, to the messenger to the apostle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no any uh, uh, any uh, position or any power or any uh, intercession for the angel between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person Allah do not say take this revelation and put to some people over there whom you want no Allah is the one who to determine him Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata He knows uh, to whom he will uh, send down the revelation Yulqi ruha min amrihi ala man yasha'u min ibadih ala man yasha'u min ibadih Upon his servants whom he wills ala man yasha'u min ibadih whom he wills Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will a certain person and sends down to him uh, the revelation beginning with uh, with uh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam till the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam and after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam the last Prophet there is no revelation for any people there is no revelation for any servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the last one Allah Azza wa Jal said مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ He is the last of the apostles. He is the last of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between Noah and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah used this way and sent down the ruh, the soul out of his command uh, upon whom, upon whom he wills from his servants and also we, we should not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the revelation uh, by chance to anyone without without any hikmah if we look without any wise if we look to the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their behavior in their life before the revelation we can understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his revelation uh, according a hikmah and uh, as a matter in fact we should look for hikmah in every action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He do not do any single deed uh, in vain without a meaning. So how we can consider that Allah sent a revelation by chance to someone? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the revelation ala man yasha'u whom He wills, but we know that Allah and the willing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not by chance. Wallahu yahdi man yasha. Allah guide whomever He wills. Yes, but we, when we read Quran, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided. Allah do not guide the, those people. So there is hikmah. There is hikmah. There is some kind of people Allah guide them. And uh, some kind of people Allah do not guide them so the willing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, we learn the uh, how the willing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 
goes on in this uh, and, and the same thing happens here from his servants whom he wills but we should know that there should be hikmah there should be meaning in the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ لِيُنْذِرَ yeah, This is the procedure of the revelation comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to some uh, people uh, actually came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to some people and the, uh, the, uh, at the end uh, it came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but what is uh, the objective uh, from this revelation why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why the one who owns the high ranks and high degrees who owns the throne why he sends the revelation why he sends the soul by his command upon some his servants whom he wills why the answer is at the end of the ayah <coughs> Liyundira, to warn. So the revelations comes to the human being to warn him. Liyundira yawm talaq And in many ayat in Quran, we see that the revelation, the messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to warn the humanity. Bashiran wa nadira, to give glad tidings for the good ones and to warn the evil ones this is uh, the last the last warning when Allah send a messenger it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning the people for the last one for the last time because before the messenger they should realize their Lord they should realize the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life they should uh, use their heart and their mind in order to acknowledge the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when you see when you look at the his, history of humanity you can see that the people didn't uh, use their uh, mind didn't reason uh, to acknowledge the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to realize the oneness and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously send them prophets send them messengers and warn them for the last time for the last time لِيُنْدِرَ يَوْمَ التَّلَاقِ so in there warning is the aim of uh, the revelation لِيُنْدِرَ يَوْمَ التَّلَاقِ and the Prophet وسلم, had warned uh, his people when uh, the first time he uh, get assembled uh, his relative and said to them, I am warning you from a fire, from the day of fire, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in there is the first and most important mission of the Prophet. And that mission after the Prophet وسلم, comes to the believers. We should warn the others. We should say to them that this life has an owner, has a creator and he will ask us about these favors and he will ask us about our abilities if we do not reason if we do not understand if we do not try to understand the meaning of this life and if we do not confess the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes upon us from every uh, side and every time if we not acknowledge if we do not respect him then the one who created us one day will make us die and will punish us be careful about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is very important we should warn the people we should uh, take their attention about their life and about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we do not warn them at that day they will ask us why didn't you warn me? Why didn't you warn me more uh, severely in order to take my attention? But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
uh, show them his ayat till they understand its reality, till they understand that it is the truth. And after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them die. Because before showing and before uh, opening the way uh, of the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not make them die because their responsibility should be completed and their cho choice should be manifest. But this does not lessen our duty towards them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to warn them, commanded us to convey the message. We will do our responsibility, but we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether over us or whether or by any mean, He will show them His ayat very clearly. Whoever dies, whoever loses this test, whoever loses the chance uh, from this life, then be sure that he loses it by a clear evidence, through a clear evidence. And whoever uh, receives the reward of paradise, be sure that he, there is clear and manifest evidence uh, for uh, that rewarding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not do anything by chance and he is never unjust. لِيُنْذِرَ يَوْمَ التَّلَاقِ And this is, this uh, is like the ayah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala says يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ Allah is the one who uh, who is sending down the angels. يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ بِالْرُوحِ with the ruh with the soul we can understand that there is angels uh, come down along with the soul and we believe that that soul is Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam yunazzilu al-malaikata bil-ruhi min amrihi and that min amrihi also mentioned in that ayah ala man yisha'u min abadihi upon whom he wills from his servants and andiru that warn mankind and andiru annahu la ilaha illa ana warn mankind that there is no God except me in that ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says warn them about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here warn them about yawm at-talaq about the day of mutual meeting. That day we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That day every people will meet. Beginning with Adam alayhi salam till the last uh, one. The day of meeting. لا تخفى منكم خافية. No one uh, will be hidden uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And andiru, warn them, Allah sends revelation, sends the angels with the soul to warn the people and andiru annahu la ilaha ana la ilaha illa ana no God, no deity no one deserves to be worshipped but I la ilaha illa ana fattaqoon so have taqwa of me <coughs> so be careful about me be careful about my commandment over you. Be careful about my right over you. Be respectful uh, to me. La ilaha illa ana fattaqun. This is the pure message and the pure objective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he uh, was sending uh, messengers to the humanity. And andiru la ilaha illa ana warn man that there is no God except me and be respectful to me. This is the same message starting with Nuh salam and ending with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين. ربنا لا تؤخذنا إن نسينا واخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به 
واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته